So you have a quote. I'm yeah. looking, um, I want to yeah, read it to you. you know, cool. Uh, it says, the truest sense of collaboration is really about dialogue. It's about communication. It's about really being present. It's about challenging the other person to rise to another level. And therefore, him or her challenging you to rise. That's when it becomes rich. I agree. A brilliant <laughs> man said that quote. <laughs> so, so in that, you know, we're talking about dialogue and communication, but the biggest thing is, is rising, elevating, mm -hmm. right? Uh, what does that mean for you today? You know, what is, and why is it important to rise together? Yeah, I, uh, it's very funny. When I, I was putting together a book of all my work, you know, it's probably maybe at like the 12 year mark or whatever, like, okay, I better do a book. Right. And it was called Elevation, okay. you know, and, and it, it didn't kind of come to life. I switched gears and, and sort of went, I was like, I think I got to wait until it becomes a little more robust. Okay. Because I think at that moment I realized that I could get to everybody. So I continued to chase what was uh, in my mind something that I saw much farther down the road than that individual moment. I saw, what, I saw what it would be 10 years, 20 years, and then 30, 40, 50 as we look back to what this is. Like these are just pockets in time that need to be authentically delivered so that people understand what it feels like. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think that's the responsibility of a photographer is to tell these authentic stories and make them, you know, real quality execution, great storytelling, but like that there's meaning even for the artists. Mm -hmm. You know, I sort of say like, look, I can put you on some steps outside and they'll look cool, or I can take you to your grandmother's steps right. and put you into storytelling mode yourself. Right. And then that's where the dialogue comes, you know? Right. It's like shooting, shooting Beanie Siegel in Philly. He's like, oh, it's my grade school. People used to get beat up down there. It was like a big group of people and I used to stand on top. I was like, that's the shot. It's a different emotion. You know, it's just being aware of the environment and then what is gonna, means something to the artist, which then in turn means something to the audience. Right. You know, and I think that's, that's the role is, and, and I, I think that's what the great ones have done too. The great photographers have always had a very clear perspective that they were able to infuse their vision in whatever the moment was, but still make it an authentic delivery. And that's where the dialogue and exchange comes in. I think you, you've, you've, you've probably talked about that uh, several times and when you say, you know, don't take a picture of somebody and just put a green screen behind them and say it's in Africa. Actually go to South Africa. Oh yeah. Go feel it. Be yeah. in the moment. It's gonna um, change. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, change. is it a part of your mission to connect people through photography? Is that, you know, they say uh, a photo, uh, is a, you know, represents a thousand words. I'm mm -hmm. an author, so I love writing. Yeah. Right? Um, so, is it a part of your mission? Do you, do you think that that is a photographer's uh, job to connect people? I think it's a, I think it's a definitely a role for a photographer to connect the artist authentically to the audience. You know, it's not necessarily, you know, the connection between me and the artist makes it a more robust experience. Right. You know what I mean? If we're talking, collaborating, like, you know, uh, like Eminem is an incredible collaborator right. because he has an idea of what he wants and then he wants to see what the interpretation is and then tweak it and whatever. It's just like he's a perfectionist, you know, and he's meticulous and it obviously plays out in his wordplay, right. you know what I mean? Right. Right. Um, and, right. and cadence and delivery, and his delivery on the album is identical to what he does on stage. Like, this is a cat that's really invested his entire soul into uh, an understanding of his talent, but also the desire to like be perfect, yes. you know what I mean? As, as close as we can, and I think, I think the great ones do strive for that, you know what I mean? We're never gonna attain perfection, but, but there are little sweet spots of like, oh, I nailed it right there. DMX in the blood with the yes, thing with the yes, oh yes. chills nice yes. you know like yes. we did it it's like how you 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 I I looked at that um, yeah. again today and it's just like how yeah you know um, and where were you all and it's, you you see that it has to be a masterful you know yeah. agreement but um, but to speak you know to to finish and to continue to speak on connection without the connection that I had established with DMX to to move on to that example right. when I shot him with the two dogs and when I shot him for it's dark and hell is hot there would be no blood because there was a trust established, you know what I mean? And an understanding that like this kid goes, he's rolling around in the dirt in Yonkers in the most filthy, grimy, abandoned warehouse just to get the right angle, to get the ceiling in, you know, sort of in my background the way he wanted it, you know? So he's like, he knew 
that I really gave my heart and soul to what I did as he passionately delivered his lyrics. Mm -hmm. So there's a synergy and there's a trust built. And it's like, I need you to get in that blood. He's like, man, I'm, 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 I'm gonna ruin my pants. Yeah. I was like, it's like 14 other pairs of styling, you know, like right. pants and styling. Right. I need you to get in this, man, because it's gonna change the world. Right. Not change the world, but you know, it's gonna be undeniable as an image, you know? And then that becomes the storytelling. Then, and it, and it speaks to, I guess, the next layer of this is like, how do you defend the, your position of wanting to do that shot? So that's also a level of communication. How do I make you get in that? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. it's like, is it covered with the blood of Christ? Mm -hmm. Is it like a car accident? Like I want you to just like not be able to look away. Is it just that? Right. Is it color theory of the red versus the white? Right. You know, and the prayerful side of him versus this angry, I'm all, you know, right. all of these are part of it, you know? How, how do the artists mold you? Like you're not going to be around these dynamic individuals for hours on end and walk away uh, the same. You know, there's going to be a part of you that's molded. Yeah. You know, a part of you that receives Lil Wayne in uh, astronaut suit yeah. different than the Mountain Dew commercial or, Correct. you know, Jay over here, you, you know, DMX, ODB. These are dynamic people, people yeah. who have, you know, grabbed the, the energy of arenas. Yeah. You know, how does that, how does that change you? Like, how does that yeah, mold the you? The energy of arenas, great quote. Um, it's, it's very interesting. I, we are probably five blocks away from where I first photographed Outkast down here in 1998. And it was my first time really in Atlanta, except for like driving through or coming down to like play tennis when I played in college, you know? Okay. But um, it was the first moment that I really understood that like cities had different pulses, you know? I was like, oh, ATL some other shit. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. What? The GC? What? <laughs> you mean they, they do what? And you just right. give doubt? Like, right. this is crazy. Right. And they all know you. Whole different vibe. It's like, I, I love accents. I love people. I love dialect. I love that. And, and I think that it changes. My mother's from England. So, like, you want a bloody English accent straight away, man. I could do it. And I could be an entirely different man, you know what I mean? Wow. Wow. And it was sorted. Like, father's from Brooklyn. Like, yeah. Take it to Brooklyn and go there, right. you know? Right. Jamaica, I run with a pack of West Indians, so. And then you got the vibe. You don't know. You know what I mean? So going to Kingston, it's like everything settles down. Going to Japan, voice drops a little bit. You know what I mean? And these are just traditional things that you kind of notice and you, you have to adapt to the environment. And especially as somebody who invests himself in understanding people and getting these authentic sort of performances, mm -hmm. you know, you can't push people outside of that zone. Where do they naturally fit? And then how do you make it the greatest version of where they fit? You know? Right. Right. Uh, one of the things that I realized early on and, and probably the most critical element of a photographer is patience. Like waiting for a moment to develop, like not giving up on it, asking for one more role, pushing somebody just a little bit farther if you're seeing something that's important, asking for another shot, asking for something, asking for what you want ultimately. Because I think if you don't ask for it, the answer is always gonna be no, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. um, but I, I have divine patience. You know, like these are the things. This is also part of the lifestyle and part of what makes it a unified thing because we're aligned with, um, with what this really should feel like authentically. And, and, and that understanding and that patience with the artists, if they need to go lie down for 30 minutes, like do it. Because you, you are that supremely confident in your skill set that even in a timed five minute or 12 minute shoot, you're gonna get the shot because you just deliver and perform. And each of those has happened. Jay-Z was a five minute shoot for a billboard when he went five times platinum. He's like, I'll give you five minutes for every time I went platinum. I was like, <laughs> I was like all right, man. Yeah. And uh, Snoop was the other one for 12 minutes. There's another quote from you. Um, and it says, we are here to experience life and I want to do it as richly as possible. Mm -hmm. When I received the quote, it's uh, actually the second quote I read from you that, that mentioned a rich Life, right, yeah. rich life experience. Yeah. Um, and that word, I think, is extremely powerful. People may get sensitive, but it's, it's such a great word oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. when you actually look at its true value. Uh, and throughout you know, our conversation, you've talked about orchestrating, you know, kind of almost being a maestro, mm -hmm. you know, making sure this goes this way and getting the shot that you deserve to have, the framing it the right, right. way, getting that. Uh, what is a rich life to you moving forward? What is, what are the experience you're looking for? Where are you looking for beauty? You know, and, sure. and, and I ask that in several different ways, but really, yeah, you know, yeah. where are your eyes headed now? Like, you know, where, where is it? Yeah, I mean, 
is, the, I mean, the most wonderful quote that's, you know, one of the most wonderful that has ever been, you know, spoken. Bob Marley had a quote um, that is one of the most important that I've ever absorbed and digested. He's like, you're rich? You know, like, you got loads of money and stuff? He goes, you know, like, for loads of possessions? He goes, possessions make you rich? Right. Possessions don't make you I don't have those kind of riches. Right. My riches is life forever. You know what I mean? And proved it and backed it up. And it means he understands his purpose and his mission and why the music exists and that it would go on forever. Like, if it lasted even the short amount of time and moved arenas, you know what I mean? Right. And, like, encapsulate, you know, like, it enraptured audiences. Right. You know, I think that uh, he had an understanding that it was much bigger than him. And, and I, I, too, sort of believe that. And I believe in richness not as being sort of wealth and financial sort of thing. Like, like money is it's essential to do what we do. And, and it's beautiful to have because it enables the experiences. But the experiences are the rich components of having the dough. That's when it's, when it's beautiful and, and truly rich. Right. Yeah. Right. Well... I believe um, being present is the only paradise, um, yeah. and this is it's definitely been a rich experience. So we'll wrap here, man. I just want to thank cool. you. Cool. Thank, thank you, you, man. Appreciate it. Appreciate you. it. It was an honor. Definitely, man. All right.